Julie. And Good. Thank you, Julie. And I appreciate your support. It, it, it's um, very um, comforting to know that we have that the support um, of our minister's assistants on these adult study classes. So it make it relieves me of a lot of stress. So, so I'll begin. Oh, first of all, I'd like to welcome all of you to today's uh, adult study class. This is class number three, and I think we have three more um, after this. So I hope you continue to tune in and, and enjoy the nuggets of wisdom that are imparted to you by our various ministers and ministers' assistants. So um, I welcome you this morning. So I'll begin by sharing my screen since I do have uh, a PowerPoint to share with you. So you are here um, in the OCBC Vista Buddhist Temple adult study class for August the 8th. And for those of you who don't know me, I am Reverend Ellen Hamada Crane and I'm a volunteer minister at OCBC and also spend time at Vista doing services and duties there. So let's go through uh, today's session, what I have outlined for us. We'll begin with chanting the Juice Day Gay, and I do have it, we'll have it up on the screen if you don't have a copy of the Juice Day Gay with you or don't have the service book. Um, so you can follow along and I encourage you to participate in the chanting. Uh, today's study topic is going to be Shinran Swasan. And uh, we'll have hopefully an in somewhat enlightening discussion or a presentation followed by the discussion. And then I've got a few announcements. So with that, let us begin. So we will begin with Gasho Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu. Dagon Cho Segan Hishimu Jodo Shigan Fumanzo Seifu Jo Shogak Ga O Muryoko Fui Dai Seshu Fu Sai Shobingu Se Fu Jo Shogak Gashi Jo Butsudo Myo Sho Cho Jipo Ku Kyo Mi Shomon Se Fu Jo Shogak Niyokujin shonen, joe shubon gyo, shigumu jodo, isho ten nin shi, jin li kien dai ko, fusho mu sai do, Shojo san kumyo, kosai shu yakunan, kai hi chi egen, me shi kon moan, he so ku sho akudo, suda tu zen shu mon, Koso jo manzok, iyo ro jipo, nichi ga tsu shuju ki, tenko on fugen, 
一周解放増、公正空力法、上大集中、説法四四区、区よい細物、具足修徳本、願念出場満、得意三害を、女仏無下地、すだつみ不祥、願がくえり、都市最小村、死がにゃこか、大戦おかんど、こくしょうてんにん、とうちんみょうけ、なまんだぶなまんだぶなまんだぶなまんだぶなまんだぶがんにし Thank you. Always a good way to start any meeting is with a little chanting. Helps to clear the mind and prepare us for listening. Okay, so let's, let's proceed with today's adult study class. And the title of my, my session is called What's Up with Wasan. And I really like this opportunity when we have you know, our study classes in the summer. It, It's、um, an opportunity to maybe explore some things that maybe we wouldn't be doing、um, at a regular service when we have Dharma school children involved. This is a, a topic that probably requires a little bit、um, you know, more adult participation or adult understanding. And、uh, I, there's a way to, to present Wasan, I think, to, to children. But、um, anyway. I don't have to worry about that with today's presentation. So、um, I really love Shinran's Wasan, and I、um, was really excited with this opportunity to be able to share with you、um, why I like his Wasan, what they are, where they came from, why they are important. And you know, this is basically a, just a brief overview of Shinran's Wasan, but hopefully, you. Might kind of catch the fire of the excitement that I feel when I, I talk about Wasan. So, we will explore some of these questions. What are Wasan?、Uh, why were they written? How were and how are they used even today? So, we will hopefully cover some of these topics. So, first of all,、um, Wasan. 
in its most basic form means Japanese him. The, the character wa has to do with Japan or Japanese and san um, means him. But um, Shinran himself uh, liked to think of the wa san in, in another way. As you know, Japanese characters can have multiple meanings. Um, that's one of the beauties of, of using Chinese characters is that there's a lot of nuanced meanings to, to all of, of the characters. And so Shinran also liked to think of wa uh, as meaning to make soft and san as to praise. So beyond this idea of it just being strictly a, you know, a direct translation of Japanese hymn, he, he liked to think of it as a softened hymn of praise. And he um, had a very deep um, emotional connection to the wasan, and I think that really comes through uh, if you read them. One of the things that's interesting about Wasan, um, which is also true of a lot of Shinran's uh, writings, was that Shinran really didn't, his major writings didn't happen until he was um, a mo more mature uh, person. The Kyogyo Shinsho, who we talk about as his mo uh, open magnus of his writings, he began or uh, we understand he started writing in his 50s and he worked on it for the rest of his life. But it, as far as the Wasans, um, we'll talk about the three major collections that, that, he, uh, that we often are become familiar with. But they, they were written when, when he was in his 70s and 80s. And so we, we see in his Wasan a very um, deep and very consistent understanding of the path to awakening and in, in done in a very simple way. Um, the structure of the wasan is very simple. Uh, each wasan is only four lines and they are typically of uh, five or seven syllables. So we'll go through um, a couple of the wasan and see, see this pattern of five or seven. Um, Five and seven uh, syllables is very common in other forms of Japanese poetry. And so um, I think in the Jisege we just did, there was five, five syllables per beat. Although the Jisege is actually from an ancient um, sutra that was written in the first century. But um, his Shoshinge, which Shinran did write, is based on a seven syllable line. So, so the wasans also reflect that. The other thing that was really very crucial about the wasan is the fact that it was geared to an everyday audience. The wasans were written in Japanese, that's why we call it a Japanese hymn, um, and it was for the common people. So we'll, we'll kind of explore that a little bit further. So here, I want to show you just an example that came from um, a book that I enjoy reading very much or um, looking at. This is the, the book that was compiled by the uh, Hompa Honganji uh, mission of Hawaii. They, they spent seven years putting together a book of, of Shinran's wasans and it encompasses two versions of the Shoshinge and 330 of Shinran's wasans. And so this is a typical page. Um, I kind of cut the page up, but all of these items would be on one page where we have the Japanese um, writing, we have the kind of the westernized um, uh, musical notation in Romaji or in English syllab syllables so that we could actually read it. And then there's, there is a translation. So you can see that it's very short. Every wasan is only four sentences. And if we look at the, the pattern, if we, if we go over to um, the musical notation, we can see that we follow this pattern of either five or seven syllables uh, per line. And it is um, considered, um, I guess it's very appealing in Japanese to have this five or seven syllable 
um, configuration. So, and this is uh, to illustrate the fact that these are the people that Shinran was, was focusing on when he wrote his Wasats. These were peasants, uh, fishermen, farmers, mostly people who were illiterate. And so his thought was that the Wasans would be um, heard orally, they would be sung, uh, they would also be memorized uh, very there because they're kind of poetically um, structured, they're more easily remembered. And so this is a way that he could, he could convey the deep and profound meaning of his, his message to awakening in a way that would be accessible to the everyday person. And that's one of the reasons why um, Shin Buddhism became so popular or widespread in Japan. Um, after um, Renyo Shonin, who was the eighth abbot, you know, it's, I guess the eighth descendant of Shinran, um, really incorporated the use of wasan um, in the, the liturgy of, of Honganji. And I'll talk about how he was able to do that um, and maybe and make it much more accessible to people. So there are three major collections of, of Wasan, um, the ones that are most commonly um, referred to or talked about. Um, in total, Shinran wrote over 500, but um, the collection of these three major collections are the Hymns of the Pure Land, which are called the Jodo Wasan, the Hymns of the Pure Land Master, the Kotso Wasan, and the hymns of the Dharma Ages, the Shozobatsu Wasan. And you can see the, the number of Wasan in each of those. Uh, the collection in the Hawaii Honganji book is, has about 330 of those Wasan. But I went through and counted the number that were in um, the collected works of Shinran and it came out to some like, like 458 uh, Wasan. But uh, um, if, we, if we include all the wasans, there were sporadic uh, other places that he included wasans. So he, he wrote them um, a, a lot of wasan. I think they just kind of came out of this sense of his deep understanding and appreciation and, and he continued to write them. So we mostly focused though on the Jodo wasan, the Kozo wasan and the Shozo Matsu wasan. And one of the, the benefits that I had in preparing for today's session is that I went through and read the 330 wasan um, of the, the Hawaii Honganji book. And um, it didn't take me very long because again, they are each four, four lines and um, going through each of the translations and just kind of one after the another, um, I got a really, very, just a really nice sense of what Shinran was trying to convey and um, the feeling that he had for, for this, the gift of awakening that um, we received through the primal vow. And um, so that was for me, um, just a really nice little exercise that I, I enjoyed, um, enjoyed doing. So, um, Today, I guess uh, we can think about how, how wasans have been used in the past and how we can move forward and, and use the wasans. So what Renyo Shonin, I mentioned the eighth abbot of Honganji did was that he, um, he kind of um, institutionalized um, saying wasans within the, the liturgy of, of the Honganji's um, chanting practices and service practices. So one of the things that, that Renyo did was that he, he um, instituted the uh, recitation of the Shoshinge at Honganji every single day. And actually it's done today um, every day, but not just once, but three times a day. So there's a 6 a.m. service, um, 
a four in the afternoon service. And I think there's another one later in the day, but it, Shoshinge is done um, three times a day. And um, so, so that it is an, just an integral part of, of uh, Hong Kongji's practices. So one of the things that he also incorporated into uh, the chanting of the Shoshinge is something called the Nembutsu Wasan. And in our service book, Nembutsu Wasan is um, also included in, in our book. And we do, when we do the Shoshinge, not always because it makes it too long, but we do have the Nembutsu Wasan. And so typically the way um, it's done is that um, one version of the Shoshinge is done followed by the Nembutsu Wasan. And so what they do at Hongganji is that they have a, a, a separate book of Wasan and they go through six Wasan a day. And so that they cover something like, I don't know, 350 Wasan in a year. They just, um, they do six, then they do the next six. They do. And so um, when you go to Hongganji, there'll be a little board um, on these various posts in, in the Hondo that would tell you which wasans are going to be chanted that particular day. And so if any of us ever wanted to go to Hongganji and participate in the, in the morning service, chanting the Shoshinge and also doing the Nembutsu wasan, we would need to take a book like the, the Hawaii um, translation book that was done because the, the wasans are all done in, are written in Japanese. And unless you read Japanese, you can't follow along. So one of the things that was done with the Nembutsu wasan is that um, a melody was applied. So Nembutsu wasan, if you will recall, when we do it at temple, is very melodious. You know, it starts off with the Namoami Dabutsu, but then, then we, we have uh, six leader lines where, where wasans are, are done. And so they are very melodious. And that's one of the advantages that I really like about the, Hongganji, the Hawaii Hongganji book is that it has the, the musical notation and you can actually follow along with, with everyone because each of the wasans has a slightly different uh, musical notation. Now we typically at, in BCA only do the first six and the first six are the only ones that are in our service book. But um, it would be a kind of an interesting thing to let's say have a class to go through some of the other wasan and practice, I mean, how, how that we would chant them um, according to um, the way that they are done in Hongganji. When I went to uh, ordination in Japan, that's one of the things we did is we we practice some of the other wasan because we would go to Hongaji in the morning and they would tell us which of the wasans would be done that day. And then we would practice beforehand so that we wouldn't be totally um, in the dark as to what was going on. So that was um, a really interesting and um, enlightening experience for me. I really came to appreciate just the beauty of the wasan um, by chanting them. And I was so excited and motivated. I thought, oh, I can do, do this at home. I like chanting the Shoshinge at, in my home. And so um, what I did is I got myself a, a small uh, keyboard, just a, you know, like an 18 inch keyboard. And I'm not very musical, but I was able to, to figure out, you know, how I could play the notes of the wasan on my little keyboard as I was practicing wasans that were not one of the six. Like I, I know the first six extremely well because we do it a lot, but I was thinking, okay, maybe I can try to learn how to do these others. So anyway, it's um, something you can do when you're retired and have more time. So anyway, that's something that I've tried doing. So next I wanted to, um, look at ondokusan, which I think most of you know is, is a wasan, excuse me. 
It comes from the third collection, um, the Shozo Matsu Wasan, which is the, um, the Wasan of the, the Dharma ages. And uh, it's number 59. And um, it was done to music and a couple of times. So there's uh, a melody that was, that was added to Ondokasan in 1918 by a Japanese person from, the, from Hawaii Honganji. And um, then, then another melody, so that, that's what we call Ondokasan one. And then there's a newer melody called Ondokasan two that was written in 1952. And I'm not sure where this individual was from, but um, it's the one that we often hear the more more often because it's a it's a little bit more updated. But both both Ondokasan versions are are also done relatively a lot. Uh, it's one of the things that I appreciate at um, Vista is that they do do Ondokasan quite often and. One of the things that I really appreciate about the Vista Temple is that they will also, before the, they sing on Doksan, they will read the English translation that's in the service book. And so um, this is right here at the bottom of this, of this uh, slide is what is in the service book, which says, such is the benevolence of the Tathagata's great compassion that I must strive to repay it even if my body turns to dust. Such is the benevolence of the masters and true teachers that I will thank them until my bones have crumbled. So it's, um, I, when I first read the words of Ondoksan, I thought, whoa, that sounds like pretty, out there with a, a, a very kind of drastic, um, um, I don't know, declaration of how, how deeply um, Shinran felt about, about what he has received um, in, in his awakening experience. And so I wanted to share with you a little bit of what some of that feeling coming from him is, is all about. Um, I'm sharing with you some information that I received from Reverend Dr. David Matsumoto, who was at uh, the Institute of Buddhist Studies, where uh, one of the things that I had to do in the master's program is to do four semesters uh, to study Shinran. And so one of them was um, studying the shorter works of Shinran, which included going over the wasans. Of course, we could only pick and choose uh, which wasans we wanted to talk about, but um, he, he had an entire handout about Ondoksan. And so I'll just touch on just one, one aspect of this handout. And that has to do with the, with the word Ondoku. And San, of course, means him or praise. So, but On is the word benevolence. And Toku with, is virtue. So when you put the two together, we do this weird thing where the T becomes a D and it becomes ondoku because it's easier to say ondoku than ontoku. At least that's what the Japanese tend to do. So what his explanation says is that here the term ondoku refers to the virtue of work, the virtue or working of Amida Buddha's vow of great compassion which enables all beings to become free from samsaric existence and attain Buddhahood. We, we receive this benevolent gift in the one thought moment of true and trusting, which we know as Shinjin, here and now, and immediately attain the complete settlement of birth in the Pure Land. So this is um, an expression of what it what the Shinjin experience is and what it means is that we are so grateful for for having received this gift from Amida that you know we we have uh, transcendence awakening insight coming to us from reality from truth and that 
he is so grateful for, for this coming to him from both teachers and from Amita that, that he, he is willing to have his bones crumble. So I wanted to share a couple of other um, versions of translation because as you know, um, translation is not an easy thing and there are many ways to translate characters and their subtle nuances. So besides this translation that appears in, in our um, service book, I wanted to share with you a couple of other translations. So this comes from the Ryukoku translation series. The Ryukoku is uh, the Ryukoku University, which is the university associated with Honganji in Japan. And they put out a series of books called the Ryukoku translation series. And um, they have three books um, covering the three major collections, the Jodo Wasan, the Koso Wasan, and the Shozo Matsu Wasan. So this is the translation that they have um, in the Shozo Matsu uh, translation book. The benevolence of the Tathagata's great compassion, even if we must crush our bodies, should be returned in gratitude. The benevolence of the masters and teachers, even if we must break our bones, should be returned in gratitude. Then there is this translation that comes from the collected works and which is what uh, the Hompa Honganji Mission of Hawaii used the translations that are in uh, the collected works. Such is the benevolence of Amida's great compassion that we must strive to return it even to the breaking of our bodies. Such is the benevolence of the masters and true teachers that we must endeavor to repay it even to our bones becoming dust. So all of these, I think, are very poetic, very, very beautifully rendered. And what this just, I think, reinforces the fact is translation is a very difficult task. And um, maybe viewing various um, aspects of various translations is sometimes a good idea. So one of the things that, we're, that Dr. Uh, Matsumoto mentioned is that uh, he says that this Wasan, he, he, he thinks most um, surely came from a writing or um, something that came from Shandao, who was the fifth of the seven masters. He was a Chinese master who lived from 16, 613 to 681, so quite some time ago, but someone that, that um, Shinran revered deeply. So this, this is an excerpt from a writing of his. Respectfully, I urge you all aspirants, when you have heard those words, you should accordingly shed tears of anguish like rain and resolve to repay your indebtedness to the Buddha, even by grinding your bodies into powder and breaking your bones for many kalpas to come. Then you will come into accord with their original intent. So I think the, the thrust of this is that it, it is so deeply felt that you even consider you know, doing something like crushing your bones. So I think it's more of a, you know, not literally you need to do that, but this is the depth of feeling that um, is felt by, by those who have received uh, the gift of Shinji. Okay, let's see. So I wanted to share with you um, a recording, I don't have a video of this, but this is a recording of the OCD song uh, singing Ong Dok San 2. And um, I thought we would just listen to this. It's like a minute and a half. There's a little bit of a delay. If everyone would please rise, we will sing the Gatha on Dokusan 2. It's in your printed program. Oh, <laughs> 
Thank you. That was beautifully done. And um, thank you. Uh, that was Jim Pollard at the beginning announcing. So voice we recognize. So um, moving forward, I think there's ways that we can incorporate Wasan today that will still continue to resonate and touch um, us. So one of the things that I have seen um, more recently um, in 2016, the BCA calendar had a whole series of, of wasans. They, they took 12 of uh, the wasans from the Pure Land wasan and incorporated that into, into their calendar. And that was a really beautiful and nicely done thing. Um, I don't recall if we've ever had a BEC class specifically. Well, actually, I know we. I know the Japanese um, teachers have done some some work with Wasan, um, and that is something that the Buddhist Education Center could be doing. One of the things we could do but haven't done is to send out daily or weekly Wasan emails to our members just to get them familiar with the Wasans. And of course, there's the Sunday Shoshinge chanting. Um, one of the things that I've always thought would be fun would be to try to incorporate some of the other wasan besides the six that are in our service book and to you know, try, try just experimenting. I think the Sunday morning uh, service is a great place to, to do some, some kinds of experimenting because it's always a somewhat small group and everybody's fairly willing to try things. So I thought that that was, you know, kind of a, an idea that we could, we could go forward with. So the, the point of Shinran with the Wasan was that it was accessible, that it was for everyday people, that it was going to be something that the peasants and farmers and fishermen could incorporate into their daily lives by memorizing them or just hearing them. Very simple, easily um, understood messages. And so going forward, um, I would like to see us using those ideas of accessibility, of making uh, the Buddhist message very relevant um, is something that we, we should emulate and follow. And I think that that's one of the messages that everydaybuddhist.org, which is the online school, is, is really trying to promote. We, we are trying to bring a contemporary form of Shin Buddhism to the world. And um, one of the things that we are considering is perhaps a, a daily uh, Dharma message, which would in, could include a wasan or you know a little little short uh, saying of some kind of quote. So we're, we're thinking about how we might incorporate that into, into our message. Um, but one of the things that we are already doing is our weekly blogs. And so I wanted to share with you just how we might do that. So I'm going to now go to, let's see, I want, I'm going to go to, Hope. Let's see. Everyday Buddhist. Where is where is that? Okay, I might have to. Here we go. Okay. Am I sharing? So I think you need to reshare. Yep. I need to reshare. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, here we go. Okay, here we are. Um, if you go to everydaybuddhist.org, you will come to this landing page. And up in this right hand corner is something called blog. And it will take you to this page, Walking the Path. And we, we um, put out weekly blogs. And this is the most recent one from Reverend Mitsumi and Reverend John. We had one from uh, Teresa Shimogawa, who is also um, one of our newer MAs. Wonderful um, um, blog that she did, a couple of them. Um, here's some that Reverend John did about Pride Month. And um, here's one that I did. So since I have permission of, for myself to share this one, this is a blog that I did about Memorial Day and um, trying to make it a very relevant um, Buddhist message. So I know some of you are our members or subscribers to everydaybuddhist.org and I thank you. And I know that some of you have, have uh, read most of our, our blogs and participate in them, but Again, this is the idea of bringing our Buddhist practice to everyday people in a way that is accessible and relevant to all of us. So, okay. So I'll, I will let you go back to everydaybuddhist.org on your own. Um, the blogs are, are free content. Uh, it is a subscription school, but there, we definitely have things that are that don't require you to be a subscriber or, or a paying member of Everyday Buddhist. But I just wanted you to know that there, there are messages out there that I think reflect Shinran's idea of, of reaching people in everyday life. I think that's one of the things that all the ministers try to do at our temple. And I, I see that through, and that's Reverend Harada's kind of lead um, on the presentation of Buddhism in the West is making it relevant and, and accessible. So with that, oh, and then I wanted to, the last thing I guess I had a few announcements before we go into our discussion. So let me reshare. And I just wanted to Thank those of you who attended the OCBC Obon yesterday. It will be um, up on YouTube. I guess the evening session was recorded. So that will be up on the OCBC YouTube site. Yesterday, Reverend John posted his Shotsky Hoyo service. So that is also available on YouTube. So I would highly recommend anyone to, to listen to that. Next week, there is a virtual BCA Obon event um, next Sunday at 1 p.m. So go to the Buddhist Churches of America.org uh, site and I will be able to um, participate and probably you have to get uh, like a Zoom link of some kind. And then I wanted to announce that next week, um, Minister's Assistant Janice Hirohama will be doing the adult study class and Janice always has something very meaningful, very worthwhile to listen to. She's a, a very deep student. And, you know, and I would encourage you to attend all the rest of the sessions. We have, as I mentioned, I think three more coming up before uh, Labor Day weekend. And then just a reminder that there's Wednesday mindfulness Zoom session. Um, it's uh, sponsored by uh, Vista Buddhist Temple from seven to eight. Uh, the MAs and uh, ministers from OCBC, the, min from the MAs from VISTA and um, actually MAs from both VISTA and OCBC and, and the OCBC ministers participate in leading those. So th that is an ongoing event and I would encourage anybody to participate. So and join. So you just need to contact VBT and get the Zoom link in order to, to join. Okay, so with that, I think let's close with, I don't know, do we do Gosho before we start the discussion? Yeah, I think because we stopped recording. Okay, so please join me with Gosho.
ナモアミダブツ、ナモアミダブツ、ナモアミダブツ、ナモアミダブツ、ナモアミダブツ。So I think 